I think that the Baird government is absolutely committed to giving everything to the private sector. Yeah. And yeah. this is just a little token. They are basically going to sell that land for 85 million. And the cost of their silly underground freeways is 11 billion. It's a drop in the bucket of that as it is a drop in the bucket of running the hospital itself. If you consider the situation of how much is privatised already, Let's take a nurse 40 years ago working at North Shore Hospital. It's just as a person who we might consider. Now, it was almost certain to be a woman, not quite, but they were nearly all women. They would have lived in, in the nursing home there. They were trained while they worked. They were paid while they worked. They were reliable for the hospital. They lived in and they went to work. They ate in the cafeteria, which was made to break even. And if it made a profit, the pink ladies who ran it gave the profit to the hospital. You could live in the nursing home as long as you worked at the hospital, so if you graduated in your nursing, you could, you could continue working there. So of course, it wasn't a very well paid job, but it was well respected and everything went fine. Now, of course, the nurse's home has been sold. And where the nurse's home was, there is a hospital which is owned by AMP. Now, it was owned by the Royal Bank of Scotland, who bought it from ABN AMRO. <laughs> But it's now owned by AMP. It was designed, according to the architects, to last 20 years, and it is being handed over to the government in 30 years. Ah, the roof is currently leaking and it's two years old. Yeah, let's assume now the nurse doesn't live in, won't live in the hospital because there isn't, isn't anywhere to live. Now, of course, the price of housing needs to be thought about. If, if someone doesn't live in, where do they live? And it might be noted that 40 years ago, the amount of money it cost to buy the median house in Sydney was 3.6 times the average weekly income. The cost now of the median house in Sydney is 11.2 times the average income. In other words, the cost of houses have gone up in real terms three times. Three times. So of course someone working in a job like nursing will live probably not near the hospital and will have to drive in. As they drive in, of course, not only has the nursing home been sold off, so has the road. So they'll have to go along the M2 and the Lane Cove Tunnel. The cost of that is about $18 a day for just driving to work. When you get to work, the car park's been privatised, it's owned by Wilson's, and it's $35 a day. And if you think you're just on night shift and you park outside, Wilson's actually have the job of policing the parking in the street, so you get a fine at 3 o'clock in the morning, because they're very, very diligent. So you're already up to um, 18 plus $35 before you've even struck a blow. The cafeteria, of course, has been privatised and now costs about $20 for a meal. And if you take your own sandwiches, you're not allowed to eat there. So if you want to eat with your friends who are eating in the cafeteria, you can't eat there. So this is the mentality. So that you're up for, you're up for the, 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 the tolls, two tolls, the parking, you're up for the food. And should you need childcare, that's another $120. And, of course, it may be $150 per day if it's a private child care. Now, you set this against the nurse's salary, which is $31 an hour, which comes to about $250 a day. Take tax out of that, you've got $200, right? So of the $200, you're giving away around about $52 just to get to work and, and park your car. If you then, and, and then it'd uh, be $72 if you have $20 lunch, and if you actually have to have child care, you, in fact, it's not worth going to work at all. <laughs> so, this is the level at which we don't look after people. And if you think it doesn't matter if something's privatised, well, just think of the nurse who's checking away $52 per day from a poor person to a rich person to do what they did before. I mean, this is the impact. Everyone says, oh, privatisation is more efficient, blah, 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 whatever. Well, actually, look at the real impact. The schools are overcrowded in our electorate because Milsons Point Primary, Cremorne Girls, Narrenburn Primary and Narrenburn Catholic School have all been sold. So of course Camaray School is extremely crowded, isn't it? And the government's saying how clever a design it's got now for its new high-rise schools. Why does it need a high-rise school? Because as soon as there wasn't enough people at a point of time, it sold that land and of course when the demographic changed and some new people came into the suburb or some high-rise was built, guess what? there was a problem. But this no tomorrow is quite frightening. And I think if you look at, I went out to Macquarie Union, spoke to the students, they've just built, as you know, the Chatswood to Epping Railway, which was uh, what, about 40 years late, but they eventually did it. 
It's now going to be privatised as well. It's going to be closed for seven months next year and it's going to be given to smaller trains which are not double-decker. Now a double-decker train is an Australian invention because our distances are very great and people didn't want to stand for a long time. If you've ever been to Paris or London or Tokyo, <laughs> you can stand for a long time and God help you if you've got varicose veins. But in Australia they said, oh, it's a bit rough, mate, we better give yourself a double-decker train, and a very good technology it was. But now we're told that they're, they're, not, they're not what they have in other cities. We don't need them. And of course the people in the northwest, it was cheaper to build a little tunnel and then get given, get given, five minutes after it's finished, the Chatswood Epping Railway. Now what sort of government gives away the railway only built yesterday, and which it should be extending to the Carlingford line at least, and then beyond that to Parramatta, what government would give away something brand new like that? Only a totally irresponsible, ideologically driven one. And I'm afraid that is what Mike Baird is, a zealot. I couldn't believe it. I rigged up the paper this morning. He's going to sell the powerhouse museum, but he hasn't got a site in Parramatta, but he's going to build it out there. It'll be Cumberland Hospital because that's the land they're going to, they're going to steal next. And it's nowhere near public transport. And how many kids are there with the transport network converging on central Sydney? How much more convenient is it for them to go to a central point like that? And the slogan of the Liberals, if you haven't seen it, it's, I like Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that? Isn't that the most vapid nonsense since Kevin 07? <laughs> I mean, it says absolutely nothing. I like Mike. Well, actually, I like Mike. There's Mike. Mike's my son. He's right here, and I like Mike. And my Mike is more substantial, and the Mike I'm fighting for is the future. For what people actually need, not some smiling privatiser. Because I reckon Mike Baird, if he wins, will be another Campbell Newman. He will just be a mad privatiser and in four years we'll be sitting there with no assets saying what the hell have we done? When I was a neurosurgery registrar I worked a basic 60 hour week, one night in two and one weekend in two and I lived in at the hospital because I reckon there really wasn't time to go home. And now that accommodation will not even exist. We need to keep every bit of public land we've got. Yeah.